Hey y'all, it's Miss Hill again. Now in this video we're going to talk about angles and I want to point out uh, that I've mentioned several times that geometry is a class where you kind of build concepts. You start with these uh, terms and these little postulates and you kind of build all of geometry from that and our vocabulary works that way too. You know, we started with our three undefined terms um, and then we created line segments and rays and as soon as we have those words we can create more things. So with the rays we can talk about these things called angles. Now you're familiar with an angle, not your first time seeing them, but we're gonna geometry it up a bit. Okay, so an angle really consists of two rays with a common endpoint. Now that common endpoint we refer to as the vertex and the two rays create the sides of an angle. So over here I have a picture of an angle with rays OD and rays OG, right? And O is the common endpoint of this angle. So therefore O is the vertex and OD and OG, those rays, are sides. Now when we name angles, we like to focus on the vertex. That's the most important point of the angle, so we're going to name them sometimes using the vertex, but we have to be very careful. Okay, we can't always just use a single letter because look at these two cases. Figure one, I have these three rays that all share the vertex A, and here I have two rays that share the vertex A. So if I asked you what angle A was in this figure, can you tell me specifically what angle I mean? Do I mean this small angle, this small angle, or that bigger angle? I don't know. It's ambiguous. And because of this complexity in this figure, I cannot name the angle by a single letter. However, in this image here, I just have one angle made up by the two rays. And so if I tell someone, oh, angle A, there's no ambiguity, so they know that I'm talking about this angle here. So I can get away with using just one letter if I have a single angle in the image. And the way I write angle A is I can use an angle symbol, and there's two versions that you can write. I will always write this version, uh, and then you'd say angle A. So that is the symbol, or one of the symbols you can use for angle. The other one um, to me looks too much like a less than. Uh, what you're supposed to do is supposed to draw a horizontal line segment and then like a slanty line segment and then you draw the A, but it looks too much like an L when I do it. Um, when I type it up with my equation editor, it looks fine. It looks actually looks like a little angle, but because the way I draw this, it's, it's awful. I always put the little swoosh in there for angle A. So I can't use an A to name any one of these angles, which gives me alternatives, right? Now you noticed I numbered the angles. So an alternate way of naming the angles is by the number. So I can also refer to this angle as angle three, this angle as angle one, and this angle as angle two. So if I number them, I can refer to them by their number. And I always put the number like inside the angle. And if I can't do that, like if I'm looking at this bigger angle, there's no number there. And so the alternate way of naming an angle is to use three letters. And the order of the letters absolutely matters. The naming convention in geometry is to put the vertex in the center. So if I want to name this bigger angle here, I choose a point on one side, so one of the rays is the first letter, and then I go down to the vertex is the second letter, and I go down to the other ray to get my third letter. So if I say angle CAB, I'm talking about this much larger angle here. If I'm talking about angle CAT, I'm talking about CAT, smaller angle one. If I'm talking about angle T-A-B, I'm talking about angle two, T-A-B. And the alternate way of ringing this angle is calling it angle B-A-R. Now I can go in reverse too, I can also say angle R-A 
B. But the key is the vertex has to be the middle letter. Okay, that's the naming convention. So if I tell you to draw angle um, DOG, O would be the vertex. The name tells you what the vertex is. Okay, so I have those naming conventions written down. Uh, sometimes I can name an angle by the vertex only, only if it's unambiguous, right? Sometimes you can name angles by numbers if the numbers are drawn in there. Otherwise, we use three letters where the middle letter has to be the vertex. Now talking about angles, we have to talk about the measure of an angle. And uh, the measure of an angle is the smallest amount of rotation about the vertex from one, one ray to the other or one side to the other measured for now in degrees. And using this definition, our angles are going to be uh, between 0 degrees and 180 degrees um, inclusive. So I can be a 0 degree angle and 180 degree angle. And so that I, what I'm talking about is, I mean, the measure is going to be this portion here in geometry. It's going to be this portion here. Uh, later on, when you get to uh, trigonometry and you look at directed angles, meaning angles that flow in a certain direction, um, and the direction becomes part of it, whether it goes from this direction or it goes from the other direction, uh, later on you're going to look at the outer part, but in geometry we're strictly smallest distance there. So our angle measures are always going to be between 0 and 180. Um, and I said measured in degrees for now because, when, once again, when you get to trigonometry, you realize that angle degrees are kind of annoying and you're going to use something else uh, called a radian, which is actually, um, I find, a lot easier to work with. So let's actually talk about measuring angles. And so what I have here is the trusty protractor. Okay, now I actually don't like giant protractors like this. Okay, but I'm going to use this giant one to show you the parts that you need to look for in your protractor. So always on a protractor, there's going to be a little point somehow indicating, like a little point here, and that little dot is where the vertex goes. And then once you have the vertex in that little dot, then you make sure one of the sides of your angle, one of the rays, lines up with this line that goes through that dot. Okay, And then you have to look along here and look at the second ray to see where it hits. Right, And since, uh, and you'll notice that you have 10, 20 going one direction and then 100, 110, 120 going the other. Now the reason why I don't like the larger protractors is because sometimes the rays aren't long enough to actually have you read the angle measure. So see I put the vertex in that little hole there. I have to make sure that that side matches with that line and luckily my angle is just barely big enough to hit that marker. Oftentimes the angle won't be long enough so you have to extend this side out. Now your templates in class and my separate small, my separate protractors are smaller ones like this one which are much easier to work with but it's a little different because instead of having a hole it has this little T, the perpendicular, which is where the vertex needs to go. So that in this type of protractor you have to line that T up with your um, vertex and then you line the side up like so and then you can read the angle measure and since this is the smaller angle I'm going to use the inner sides and it looks like it's 40 just shy of 45 degrees so it looks like it's 44 degrees um, and so that is how you use a protractor being able to measure an angle takes us to our second conjecture of geometry and it says that two angles are congruent if and only if they have the same measure. And rem remember, if and only if is the conditional statement 
that works both directions where you can swap the premise and the conclusion and they're both true. So two angles are congruent if they have the same measure or if two angles have the same measure, they are congruent. And the final portion of this 